Welcome or welcome back to my channel by Emwu. I'm Emwu, aka Marianne, and this is episode two of my knitting podcast. It's been a little while since I last filmed, I'm not gonna lie, and in that time, I think I should have gotten more knitting done than I did, but knitting is my side hobby as well as this YouTube channel, so I'm trying not to put any pressure on it. That being said, it was a long weekend here in Canada slash Ontario. I don't know if Victoria Day is a, a nationwide holiday. Regardless, I had a long weekend last weekend and so I did get a little bit of knitting in and so I do have a couple finished objects to share with you as well as some updates on knitting projects that I've been working on and some exciting yarn acquisitions. So like I said, the last weekend was a long weekend for us and Ryan and I and Jube went to a cottage not too far from Ottawa and we got to spend the weekend there. I thought I was going to get more knitting done on that trip but I think I'm always a little bit ambitious with my knitting plans or my time plans regardless. Um, so I didn't actually get too too much done. That being said, as much as I said I haven't really had a chance to do too much knitting, I have a couple finished objects to share with you guys. The first one is just kind of like an update finished object and that's about my Aorsta Summer Tea by the Knit Pearl Girl. I talked about this shirt in the last podcast that I had and I was actually wearing it and I made mention that it wasn't technically finished by some people's standards because I hadn't blocked it yet. Um, for those of you who care, I define something finished as once you can wear it. So blocking is not a mandatory thing in my opinion. But as a quick update, I did block the shirt. I knit it up in Santa's Garden Sunday in the colorway Acorn. And I don't know why I always get like surprised after blocking. Like I know blocking is kind of a magical thing and it kind of brings out the garments or the finished objects like true potential but the t-shirt relaxed quite a bit since I blocked it and I'm really happy with the way that it drapes now. Previously it was a little bit bunchy, also didn't mind that but it's now got this beautiful like drape to it as nice as you can get for merino. It doesn't drape the same way as like cotton merino or cotton but I'm really happy with it. Because it did relax a decent amount. I didn't take before and after measurements unfortunately, but I do think it like relaxed out maybe about an inch or so. I think that it's going to be even better for the summertime because it's just that much like flowier, you know? If you want to hear more about my thoughts on the process as well as the pattern, you can check out my previous podcast, which I will link up above or down below in the description. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update for those of you who wanted to know. In terms of my next finished object, I was looking for kind of like a palette cleanser slash something cute to wear to the cottage and I settled on something called the Penelope Kinkerchief by Lena Naiman, I believe is the name. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering it. I'm really bad with names and just pronunciation in general. Um, as like I will always put the pattern names and the designer names in the description below if you guys are curious. But it's this little headscarf that has this beautiful lace pattern on it and kind of stockinette stitching on the sides as well as this eye cord detailing. I casted this on the Thursday before I left for the long weekend in anticipation that I would finish it prior to going so I could wear it on the beach and in the cottage. It just kind of gives me this like cute rustic vibe. Um, spoilers, I didn't actually finish it. I didn't even bring it actually to finish it on the trip, partly because it was my first time doing lace motif and I kind of wanted my knitting project for the trip to be kind of mindless. Um, not that this knitting, or sorry, not that this lace pattern was difficult. The pattern was really clear in terms of how to do it. I just think it was one of those I was messing up every once in a while and then I would have to like rip back the previous two rows that I worked on to fix it and I don't really like frogging so I was getting a little frustrated <laughs> with it um, but I finished it when I got home and it's this cute head scarf. I was gonna wear it today but 
I couldn't really get it to cooperate because my hair is so straight, it was just sliding out constantly and I didn't really want to film like with always adjusting the headband, if you know what I mean. But I loved the pattern. Like I said, the pattern was super easy to follow. It's actually free for those of you who are interested in knitting one. Um, and the pattern was introduced to me by Emily from High Fiber Knits, who is a fellow Canadian knitter and she said it was a really quick knit and I saw it and I was like, that's so cute, I wanna try it. So hence, I did. This headscarf was done in the Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Mushroom Rose held double. And I had an extra skein of it left over from a previous project that I did um, that I kind of wanted to use up because as much as I plan on making like a scrappy blanket, I felt like it was pretty much like a brand new skein. I think I had only used like a couple meters of it to finish that previous garment. And so I thought it would be fun to knit up something to wear. Like, I don't know if I would make another one if I'm being totally honest, not because of the pattern by any means. I think more so just because in retrospect, it's not really an accessory that I would wear too, too often, but it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern and beautiful, beautiful yarn. Would highly recommend it if you're interested. It was my first time doing a lace motif as well as an I-cord edge. And the pattern itself was really good in terms of describing both. Um, so I would say that it's relatively beginner friendly. Um, I think if it's your first time doing it, you do need a little bit of patience. But besides that, I think a beginner would be able to kind of finish an object like this. My last completed object is a pair of socks. And these socks are socks that you guys have seen before because in my last video, they were almost done. I had finished one of them and I think I had like the toe left of the second one. Um, I mentioned that if I just dedicated like an hour or two to get it done, I would be able to knock it out no problem. That was true. I think after that video, I just sat on the couch and finished them. These are what I have been calling my sunset socks for my husband Ryan and it's this kind of stripey yellow, orange, blue pair of socks. I really enjoyed working with this yarn. I mentioned that in the last podcast. It's a little bit more like rustic and I really like the way that it knit up for socks. I think these socks will last very well. Um, in terms of the sock shenanigans, <laughs> I mentioned last time that I'm bad at socks in terms of like following patterns. Okay, that's not true. I'm bad at like making identical socks because I kind of knit socks willy nilly. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm pretty sure this pair in the front is like ever so slightly shorter. I'm pretty sure that I did the toe decreases differently. Um, it is what it is. I'm just clearly, I'm just clearly very, what's the word? Scandalous? No. Like a daredevil when it comes to socks. In my opinion, your sock, your feet aren't the same, so your socks don't need to be, right? These, I mentioned last time that I lost the labeling to the package, so I don't fully remember. Based off my Ravelry notes, it says they are the Opal Sunrise socks in the colorway 9440. I would only have to trust past me that I wrote those correctly, but I'm not sure. It was a ball of sock yarn that my mom just gave me, and so I made socks out of them. But now that I have filmed, Ryan can now wear them. I think he's a little excited, even though it's like middle of summer, but he did wear my other pair of socks the other day. So they're get, they are getting some love. For those who probably already noticed, they haven't been blocked, but they're finished in my opinion. Socks are like low key projects, right? Like I don't think you need to put too much pressure on them. So those are my finished objects for today. Immediately after finishing those pair of socks, I cast it on a new pair. And this one, again, I'm, doing the same thing in terms of kind of willy-nilly, just making it up loosely inspired by just like a plain pair of socks, like the Hermione one with just stockinette. 
Um, oh no, I lost, I haven't worked on this in a while and all of my stitches dropped. Okay, well, while I work on picking these up again, these are a pair of socks for my father-in-law. I am getting a head start on my Christmas knitting. <laughs> it's way too early, but I bought these socks. I bought this sock yarn like a while ago and I'm not allowed to buy more sock yarn until I finish my current sock yarn. So we're starting Christmas knitting. These are interesting in the sense that I am knitting these pair of socks two at a time. And I mentioned that last time I was interested in exploring this option because I'm so bad at making identical socks. And I think this would is like the most minimal way of ensuring you have similar socks without really having to think too hard or take too many notes. And so it was a little finicky because you have to have two separate skeins of yarn per sock so you don't knit them like together. And so I had to take a pair of of sock yarn, split it into two, and then you have to cast them on separately uh, before you can start passing them on. So this is all I have done currently. Um, just the cuff, and I've just briefly started the leg portion. I'm also just gonna make these as stock and net socks because I asked Ryan what he think his father would like, and he mentioned that he just thinks he wants plain socks. I'm also gonna make my mother-in-law a pair. Um, I'm debating if I want to do more of like a lace motif or also plain socks. So if you guys have any like cute sock pattern recommendations, please let me know. I have a couple in mind, but I'm not set on anything. This experience of knitting two at a time has been both good and bad. I do like that I know that they're going to be similar because you're working on them at the same time. I also really love that they'll be done at the same time, so sock island or second sock syndrome is what I call it won't be a thing because you'll be done at the same time. That being said, it definitely requires a little bit of more concentration. Uh, typically socks are like my throw in my bag, just bring them around, knit whenever, wherever I am kind of project. And not that you can't do them when they're two at a time, but I think you have to think about it a little bit more because you're not just like knitting aimlessly in a row, right? You gotta like pick up like your working yarn, do one, drop it, pick up the other working yarn, get yourself set up and then do it again. I'm like complaining for the sake of complaining. Like I think it's a great alternative if you don't like knitting single socks because I'm so early on. I don't anticipate it will change too much. I'm interested to see how it will work when you're working the gusset um, and the heel turn because usually you hold, like you put half of the stitches to rest on one needle while you're working the other one. So I'll keep you guys updated. They're just in their infancy right now. I hope I will make progress, but because these are Christmas socks, I'm not in any big rush. Oh, uh, before I forget, this sock yarn, I believe is called Footsie's sock yarn. I just picked it up at my local yarn store and I'm knitting them on one, US one Chiaogu needles. Um, these ones are the ones that my sister gave me when she introduced me to sock yarn. So they're probably way longer than need to be, but that's okay. Yeah, I love these Chiaogu needles. They're the only metal needles that I use. And I like that the wire is, or the cable is like memoryless, which I think most people say. So yeah, this is, the sock update. I hope to make more progress, but also we're not in any rush. For my next whip, work in progress. You guys have seen this one before and I have a little bit of exciting news. It's the uh, Friday Tea by Petite Knit. I am knitting this in San Garden Sunday in the colorways Almond, as well as I believe it's the Dusty Moss Green. Um, the exact names will be down below as well as on my Ravelry. And the last time I showed this, I was still working on the yoke. So I have since split for sleeves and I am now working on the body. I would say I'm about halfway, maybe a little less. Um, and it's been a really nice knit right now. I've been working on this one the most. This st 
stitch I think is the marker that sorry this marker is the marker that I put here prior to going on vacation and so I've I did a little bit since the last time we talked and then this marker was vacation marker and so I've done so much since last Saturday approximately and I'm really excited to wear this for when it's done I am a little nervous about the sleeves I think they're like elbow length sleeves maybe a little bit shorter and I have second sleeve syndrome like bad like real bad so I think it will be once I finish the body there's gonna be a little bit of a like motivational hurdle to get the sleeves done but maybe because I'm excited to wear it that will be enough last time that I brought this up I given that I was like only partway through the yoke I said I didn't really have too too much to talk about in terms of the pattern Realistically, I still don't have too much. It's been a really easy pattern to follow. It's done in broken rib, which is one row is two alternating rows, one of like knit only and then one of knit and a pearl. Like it's relatively mindless, obviously not as fast going as stockinette because you do have to alternate between knit and pearl in the second row. But especially once you finish the raglan increases, you're just kind of going in a pattern. My only two cents about the pattern is, and maybe this is a my fault situation, but it's when you're doing the stripes. She has her beginning of round, like beside, like at a raglan increase for the first portion of it, like in this area. And so I was having this situation that I don't know if my stripe changes are really clean. I mean, like looking at them now in the video, it's not as clean as I would have liked. She does provide you a video to kind of explain how to do it um, in terms of like you lift up the previous row's right arm and then you knit those two together. But because the second row starts on a pearl, I don't know if I've been doing it right. I don't think it looks too bad right now. I'm worried that when I block it out and when the shirt relaxes a lot, which it, I think it will because right now it looks really small. Oh no, I'm gone. I'm caught. Um, I think it looks really small, like, like it looks kind of like a kid shirt, right? It will stretch out. I have like the swatch here that you can see and it definitely does open up a lot more. But I'm worried that once I block it, it will become more obvious because you'll just have more spacage in between. Realistically, it's on the back side. It won't you won't really see it too much and I'm pretty sure someone who like doesn't really know knitting would notice, but just a small comment. I don't know if that's just like my experience not showing. Um this is my first time doing stripes and maybe it's really simple and I just didn't do it properly. But that's okay. I am almost done the body. Or, that's not true, I still have quite a bit to go, but I've been really enjoying this knit. I've liked the way that it's worked up. I really like how clean the folded collar looks, and yeah. Not too much to say besides that. Hopefully, at least in the next update, my goal is to have a finished body, hopefully a finished shirt, but I think that's a little ambitious. So that's the Friday Tea by Petite Knit. Okay. So I'll speed round the last two updates for the work in progresses. These are more just accountability updates for my own sanity because I want something to look back on and be able to be like, oh, that's the progress that I've made. So the first one is, I think last time I was calling this the Marissa cardigan. I now have heard it called the Mar Maricia cardigan. I think that's actually probably more accurate again. I don't know, but it's the cardigan with um, faux cabling detail by Ver and Rose on Instagram. I have made very little progress, but I just wanted to say that I did do a little bit more. It probably looks no different than last time, but it's a little bit longer. I think I'm close to finishing the body and then I'll have to do the sleeves, which all things considering, given that I think this is going to be more of a, like a fall, cardigan than a summer spring one. I think I'm making decent progress. The only thing I would want to add about this is that I'm a little worried about the size. I made the smallest size and I did a gauge swatch and it was like two gauge. I matched the patterns gauge 
like before and after blocking. But I think it's really wide right now and I think it's only going to get wider as it blocks out. So maybe I feel like part of it is because of the silk mohair and it kind of messes with my tension, especially when it's on a larger scale than then like a 10 centimeter swatch. But I think it'll be cozy regardless. Cardigans can be oversized. So I'm not like too, too worried. I'm a little curious to see how this will turn out exactly because I think it's on the trajectory of being too wide. That's a little update there. Probably only did like an inch since I last talked to you guys, but again, wanted to throw that in there in case any of you were interested, slash if, if you're not, I wanted to keep it for myself. The last one is my baby blanket for my manager. Again, not too, too much to say about this. This is the Sunny baby blanket. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm just doing it in this golden yellow color that I got from Michaels. And again, I think I did an extra like two inches, maybe not even since I last talked to you guys. This timeline is coming up, so I need to get a move on this. But I don't know, knitting flat, like back and forth, is just not my vibe right now. So we will see how much progress I make. I am going to be busy in June and she is gone mid July. So, we might be cutting it close. Who knows? All right, the last section is the yarn acquisition and future planning section. Typically, I, th I don't know if I'll have too, too much. Um, I think it'll be waves of like, I have a lot to talk about and then nothing to talk about because I typically buy my yarn project planning in bulk um, to get free shipping. But on our lawn weekend getaway, there was a local alpaca farm that we stopped by and they sold alpaca yarn. And so I didn't need more yarn. I bought more yarn. I, I was pretty tame. I only bought two skeins and they are these two skeins here. So the alpaca farm was called Forest Cove Alpaca and they were um, off of the 417, I believe in Chalk River, I think is the town that it was in. And it's this cute alpaca farm. We went when it was raining, so we didn't actually see the alpacas, but they have ice cream and you can see alpacas and they have like a little shop that you can buy like hand knits as well as yarn. I picked up these two skeins, skeins, which is this beautiful burnt orange color. It's, it's like, I love this color. It's so vibrant. And then this just brown color. Um, these are each 100 skein, 100% baby alpaca. My plan for these two is to make a muscle burl hat for my husband Ryan. And the funny story behind this was because I was actually going to make a hat. I was going to make the Tin Can Knits Barley hat with Pure Gint, um, Santa Scarn's Pure Gint in the colorway. I don't remember the name, but it was like a deep forest green color. It was actually this one here. And I was like midway through this hat. I had cast it on. I was like kind of in my groove. And I was talking to my mom one day and she was like, you need to stop making that hat. And I was like, why? And she was like, it's bad luck. It means bad things in Chinese culture. You gotta, you gotta stop. And I was like, kind of confused. I was a little upset if I'm being honest because it felt very like out of nowhere. But turns out if you knit your significant other a green hat in Chinese culture, it means that you cheated on them. We don't want that. <laughs> we don't want people to think that. So that hat has since been frogged. But because I promised a hat for Ryan, um, I was like, what do I do now? In retrospect, I kind of would have rather worked with like a fingering weight yarn. And I really wanted to make like the muscle burl hat. It's like a really popular hat on Ravelry that's like gauge-less or, um, and so you can make it like any shape, any size, pretty much. Um, and it's like, a really clean classic hat. And I was gonna use this yellow sock yarn that I had for that. But when we saw these two, 
Ryan got really excited about the prospect of an alpaca hat that was reversible with orange and brown. And so we are now moving forward with that. I believe it's fingering weight. Like I said, there's no meterage. It just tells you the like what it is, which is 100% baby alpaca and it's a 100 gram skein. I would think that it's fingering. It seems like fingering weight. But because it's a gaugeless pattern, I think it will work out fine. His head's gonna be so warm though, because especially if you do the folded up brim, it's gonna be like four layers around the ear with baby alpaca. So I don't have to worry about his head being cold in the winter at least. But that's the plan for these. I am now gonna use that green pure gint that I had that was for the hat originally um, to make my nephew a vest. I haven't decided on what style. I was gonna make a vest for like, someone else, maybe Ryan, but I only have, I only bought enough yarn to make like a hat and a little bit more. So it's gonna have to be a child size vest. But those are my plans right now. I hope to cast on this hat soon, but also I kind of have quite a few work in progresses on the go right now. And typically I like to keep it at three. I think I'm at more than three right now. And so I might hold off on casting on that hat but also I'm really excited to work on the muscle burrow because it's like a really long tube of just stockinette, which sounds really appealing right now. I am definitely a process knitter. As much as I like the finished object, I like just like mindless knitting. Um, so I think that hat's like right up my alley. So lastly, because I have a little bit of footage from the long weekend, I'm gonna insert that at the end. If anybody wants to watch, feel free to watch until the end. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will catch you guys later. Bye friends.